I suck it. I thought it was in verse 37. He, he has done all things well. I should have had a few more of you guys right there. I said he's done all things well. The question on the floor is, have you ever had something happen to you that was so good that you just couldn't wait to text, talk, tweet, Amen. tell somebody Amen. about your blessing? Yeah. Yeah. But what if someone blesses you? And this has happened to me often. They bless you. And they say, look now, don't say a word to nobody. I didn't do this for that. Just keep it to yourself. Anybody ever been there? And I don't know about you, but it's extremely difficult to hold on to good news. I mean, when you get a new car, you want to drive it around town. Slow. So everybody can see you in your new car. What good is a new suit, a new dress, if you have to leave it hanging in the closet? Some sisters, I'm not gonna call your name. You've been praying for a man. One day you're gonna get that ring. But what good does it do to get the ring if you can't show nobody? I mean, it's human nature to want to share good news. I know some of y'all specialize in sharing bad news, but it's human nature to want to share the good news because the truth about the matter is you talk about everybody else's bad news, but when they come to you, you only want to share the good news. But much about being blessed is being able to share or express the blessings with others. Even those times, those situations when that person has told you not to tell somebody, uh, I bet you still told somebody. And you told that somebody, you better not tell. Am I in the house? And so during the life and ministry of Jesus, there was a time or two when he blessed me and he told them, don't tell nobody. And I, I, I mean, again, I know that was difficult for them to do. Now, some did and others could. Because it's hard to keep the blessings of God to, your, to yourself. And I'm so glad the Lord today doesn't require us to keep our blessings from God a secret. In fact, the, the, the psalmist said you need to declare his deeds among the people. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make known his deeds. In other words, let the world know about the goodness of God. Don't you sit there and let God bless you when you sit there with your mouth shut and your hands under your body and don't want to say anything or thank God for all of his many blessings. Give thanks and testify of the goodness of God every day of your life. That's what makes a good witness. If you're not a witness, only because you saw something, you're a witness because you saw something, but you're not afraid to tell it. If you don't tell it, ain't no good you being a witness. Now, I don't think I could keep it a secret. I mean, come on, when you think about how good God has been to you, I mean, when you really think about it, if you just sit there for a minute, I'll give you a couple seconds, one, two, three, just think about the goodness of Jesus. It would be extreme difficult for you not to talk about the goodness of God. Everybody in here is a bestseller. We all have a story to tell. We all have a testimony of how God brought us out, of how God brought us through. You just can't sit there and say nothing when God has been good. This, this man in our text was healed by Jesus. And he couldn't keep it to himself. Texas, again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came to the Sea of Galilee through the coast of the Compass. 
Now, the Decapolis is first mentioned uh, back in chapter 5. Those of you who have your Bibles, look for fit back a few pages. Mark chapter 5. Uh, it tells us that Jesus was three different positions in one chapter. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he was a psychiatrist, he was a gynecologist, and he was a pediatrician. Yeah. All in the fifth chapter of Luke. Come on, you want to walk down? There was a demon-possessed man uh, who called himself Legion. Yes. And he came to Jesus, and Jesus served as his psychiatrist because when the man met him, he was out of his mind. Yes. And when we see him later, he's sitting before Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And so Jesus dealt with his mind, told him, go home and tell them all those folk at your house what God what has done for you. And the text says he departed and they began to put the word out about all the things he has done in the conference. Now, now it's amazing what he did. Now watch as he worked one miracle on his way to another one. He was on his way down to Jairus' home to heal his daughter. When the woman with the issue of blood pressed her way through the crowd. Are you with me? And she pressed her way so that she could just touch the hem of his garment. And so he served as a gynecologist because as soon as she touched the hem of his garment, her issue dried up. And Jesus said, let me tell you something, it ain't the garment, it ain't the H-E-M, but it's a, a faith in the H-I-M. Yeah, don't be having faith in your clothes and your materials, but you need to have faith in the Christ. If you have faith, he has the power. So Jesus, he's on his way to Jairus' daughter. She's 12 years old, and he served as a pediatrician because the girl was dead. And he walks in and said, Talitha, come in, dance, so I sing unto you, arise. And they were all astonished, and he told them, look, don't say anything to anybody. Now he just told a man that was out of his mind, go tell everybody at your house. Now he's telling Jairus, look, don't you say nothing to nobody. I mean, God is strange in this direction. You can't figure him out. You can't trace him, but you just got to trust him. And so here we are in chapter 6. He went into his own country. He's teaching in the synagogue, and they're asking the question, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and, and Joseph, and Jesus answered, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. He tried to work miracles there, but he marveled because of their unbelief. Isn't it a shame when God will try to work a miracle in your midst, but yet, because of your unbelief, he will just leave you alone? And so he called the twelve together, sent them out two by two, and they went out preaching repentance. In chapter 6, Herod is confused. Because now he's thinking Jesus is John. He went through and he was through with John. And now John, he's saying that that's John risen from the dead. But that's really Jesus come back from, from coming back from God from heaven. And so in chapter 6, we have the banquet for 5,000. Five fish and five loaves and two fish of bread. And after feeding the 5,000, watch Jesus. He departs into a mountain to pray. And I was telling somebody this morning, not only do you have to rest, but you need to take some time out to pray. Yeah. And he went up into the mountain to pray, told his disciples to get into a ship. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. And while they were in the ship in the midst of the sea, the winds began to blow, and the waves began to beat against the ship. And we got a lesson on nature because Jesus walked out on the water. And he walked out on the water and said, be of good cheer, get his eye, be not afraid. Again, that lets us know the storm may blow in your lives, but be of good cheer, God has it under his control. All he needs to do is step out and say, please be cheer. He controls the wind and the wind. Mark chapter 7, scribes and Pharisees. The question is, are you going to obey God? Or are you going to go by man's tradition? You see, they had a problem because the disciples were not washing their hands and they were looking to find fault with Jesus. And so Jesus tells them that it's not so much what enters into a man. Come on, look at verse 15. It ain't what, what goes in a man that defiles him, but evil comes from the heart. <laughs> it's already in you. It ain't what you put in you. I tell you this all the time. It's already in you. Folks say, Reverend, I didn't mean to cuss. No, it was in you. 
and it just took a little something to get it out of you. And so if any man here has ears to hear, yeah. Yeah. let him hear. Right. I like Mark, because Mark keeps it moving. Mark keeps it moving. From there he went to the, to the borders of Tyre and Scylla, and, and watch this, this woman, this Canaanite woman, she, she heard about him, she heard about his power, and so she came and she fell at his feet and begged him that he would get the devil out of her daughter. And Jesus said, listen, this, ain't, this bread ain't for you, this bread is for the children of Israel. And she said, listen, you talking about bread, but all I need is a crumb. Because <laughs> if you just bless me with a lift, man, and that's all I really need. See, y'all in the bakery asking for bread, but all you really need is a crumb. And so Jesus said, because of your sin, listen, you just go on home. Your daughter has been delivered. And verse 31, and again, he ends up in the college. And when Jesus showed up, they, they went looking for him. I said they went looking for him. Matter of fact, they found him. Yeah, they found him. You want to know how I know they found him? Because they, they brought to him a man that was noticed deaf and had a speech impediment. Are you with me? No, no mention of his name. It just says one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. Couldn't hear. He could talk a little bit. He, he could talk with some some difficulty. He couldn't hear the sound of voices. Couldn't hear the sound of thunder. Couldn't hear music. Most importantly, he couldn't hear the word of God. They, they bring him. And they, they beg him, they beseech him to put his hand upon him. Now, now, now watch this text. And as we go our way witnessing, as you go throughout these streets telling folk about the love of God, can, can you do pastor a favor and just accept these people the way they are? Amen. 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 When you go out and witness, you're not there to evaluate them. You're not there to question them about their worthiness. You're not there to judge them. You're not there to check out their credentials. Your job is just to bring people to Jesus. Your job is simply to bring them to Jesus and lead them with Jesus because he's the one that cares and he's the one that able to help them. And so someone was sensitive to this man's need. They say, let's take him to Jesus. And verse 33 tells us Jesus, watch this, leads him away from the crowd. Come on, come on with me. Your mind's eye. I need you to picture this as well. Jesus uh, probably puts his, his hand around the man's shoulder. Uh, he probably grabs him by the, by the arm or by the hand, but, but I don't want you to miss the compassion. I don't want you to miss the consideration of our caring Savior. See, see, just like Jesus, we family, ain't we? Uh, just like Jesus, we need to learn how to be gentle with people. We need to learn to be more, more compassionate with people because life has a way of beating up on people and we don't have to add to their injuries. And that's why I say every Sunday, be careful how you treat people because you never know what they went through throughout the week. And you need to be careful how you treat people because you never know who you're going to meet before you leave this place. Yeah. Your prayer will be, Lord, help and be kind to everyone. Yeah. Let them feel that in need. So Jesus, watch the picture, takes him away. Aside from the moment. No doubt in private, he fixes the man's attention on himself. He wants this man to know he's about to do something. Because the man can't hear. He could have spoke. And the man would have been healed. But the text says he he literally watch it cast across his fingers one in each ear. 
Are you with me? Yeah. It was as though he was saying to the man, I'm about to open a passage for hearing through his ears. And next he spat. In those days, spittle had a curative quality. I thought y'all sitting there and looking at me crazy, because uh, sometimes I had that ash behind my ear. <laughs> Come on, my mom ain't the only one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I heard another preacher say some of y'all would be better off if y'all let the Lord spit on you. Calvary was 
see who it is. But yet, the people of the capitalists told everybody about what happened. The more Jesus tried to quiet, the more they smelled. What they experienced was simply too good not to talk about. And y'all sit there quiet if you want to, but I can't say I blame them because I know what it must have felt like because every now and then I gotta tell somebody about how good God has been to me. As a matter of fact, this song the other day, I was having a conversation with a preacher about my heart attack and told him how I was preaching here on one Sunday and how God hit me with a heart attack but yet delivered me still to preach again. You got to tell somebody about how God has been good to you. I know what it must have felt like because I often tell folks how God has protected me and how God has provided for me, how God has made a way for me. I often tell folk that God is my refuge and my strength, the very present help in times of trouble. I got to tell folk that God is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I, I got to tell folk I ain't afraid of everybody because God is my refuge and my strength. He, he's, my, he's my time of weakness. He's my strength. He's a well that never runs dry. He soothes and he sustains and he satisfies. I, I got to tell it like David. David said, I've been young and now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, the seed baby grave. It's hard for me when I've been through the storm not to give thanks to God. It's hard for me when I've been on my sick bed not to give thanks to God. It's hard for me when Satan set a trap not to give thanks to God. I've got to tell somebody how God protected you, how God provided for me, how God pulled me up out of the mire clay and set my feet upon the rock to stay. I've got to tell somebody he'll pick you up and he'll turn you around. He'll plant your feet on solid ground. If he's done anything for you, he needs to say thank you, Lord. If he brought you in when you were out, you need to tell somebody. Thank you. 
the ship be placed there. They used to have a church. I want to thank you know by saying amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Good to have
y'all welcome back to the domino seven show okay uh i i had lots of fun in church church was so excellent all right yes indeed it was it, it was so wonderful and i'm glad i went you know what i mean okay so as far as that uh like they say uh, uh when you uh, um god may not come when, when you need him but remember he's always on time you know what i mean okay I enjoy doing my videos in church, you know what I mean? I, I enjoy filming, especially this, this man with, with, with the tambourine thing, you know what I mean? Okay, so they they, they they had to give him a tambourine, though, because one time he he had that fan thing, you know, but but uh, but, but, uh, but, but, but on the other hand, they had to, they, they had to give him a tambourine so he could, so, 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 so he could, uh, 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 shake that thing and when when the when the music play, you know, when everybody's singing, you know, where was he when, when we needed him before Katrina? Nobody knows. Maybe joined church before Katrina and I wasn't even there. Nobody knows, you know. All right, so uh, so anyway, I enjoy church uh, 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 since since uh, uh, my childhood, you know. I remember as I grew up, I never wanted to go to church, but now I'm back, okay? My cousin Ryan was in church today. Yes, indeed. It was a blessing that he showed up, you know? All right? I, I, I enjoy seeing him, though, you know? So hopefully he'll come to my party if possible, okay? All right, so that's all I, I, I need to say for right now. Thank y'all for watching, okay? God bless. <laughs>